Alrighty, guys, it is Quaman here today, and I'm bringing you another Ask.fm video where I answer a plethora of subscriber questions. As of right now, I have 17,843 questions, but I am not alone as I am joined with... Hey, guys, it's Mike here from Laughing Stock Media. How's and it going? And we're going to be answering a lot of your questions in this Ask.fm video today. Mike is one of my old subscribers and i think he makes a lot of great content so i hope you guys check him out in the comment section below so without wasting any more time mike let's get straight into this video so why don't you take the first one from the bottom doesn't from it annoy you when you're when you go to your friend's house but there's no beverages hmm what do you say to that mike well yeah i mean seriously bring some freaking beverages when i'm coming over <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, guys, I mean, when it pertains to beverages, I mean, I guess you should always have some beverages when you go to your friend's house. But me personally, I don't really ask my friends to, you know, drink beverages in their house. I think it's <clears> kind of <throat> disrespectful. I'll only take a drink or anything along those lines. By the way, I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. But I'm saying I won't actually drink a beverage at a person's house unless they offer it to me. I'll never ask because I just think that's very disrespectful. Yeah. All right, let's see. Golden Frieza versus Super Saiyan God Goku Battle of Gods. What do you say to here? Um, Golden Frieza would probably beat him. Well, if you're talking about who would win a fight in terms of power, I mean, I don't want to give you guys a lot of spoilers, but from what I've seen from some tidbits of Fukatsu no F in the fight between him and Goku, Golden Frieza is actually was actually stronger than pure Super Saiyan God Goku. I'm not going to say that horrible name that Mike knows I'm, I refuse to say, but he was stronger than the pure Super Saiyan God transformation with the blue hair. And the reason why Goku started gaining the edge on him is because Frieza was tiring out and running out of power. And that's really when Goku started to dominate him. But Goku started dominating the fight once Frieza was running out of energy. A little bit similar to the fight on Namek, even though Goku in the manga kind of had the edge the whole fight. So... In terms of power, Golden Frieza would be stronger than both uh, Pure Super Saiyan God Goku and Vegeta. But, you know, in terms of a long-term fight, Goku would win. And, but if you're saying Super Saiyan God Goku from Battle of Gods, considering the fact that Goku couldn't even last in that form for a very long time, I mean, in, you know, even though he retained some of the God aura, that leads me to believe that he would definitely not be strong enough to take him on. So that's my opinion. What do you say, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I mean, that's always been Frieza's biggest vice. Uh, he's, he's very similar to Super Saiyan 3 in his max power form and his golden form, where his power will just diminish at a rapid rate. So in the end, if you're playing the long game, he kind of is going to lose. But against Goku, whose power diminishes like as well in Battle of Gods, like if we're using the, the first time Goku ever went Super Saiyan God, it's, it's even more of a toss up. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess that does it for this question here. Okay, so let's see. Take this one, Mike. What if Baby took over Goku? Why didn't he do it when Goku was Super Saiyan 4? P.S. He can't enter a body smaller than his. That why he left Vegeta's body when he wasn't Uzaro anymore. Hmm. What do you say to that? Uh, didn't they specifically say that there's a reason why Baby couldn't take over Goku? <sighs> I don't think there was a reason, and from what I remember, Mike, I mean, it's a little foggy, but I think the reason, I think Goku, I think Baby was on Earth and causing all trouble, while I think Goku and Pan were in outer space, yeah. and Trunks got infected because he was on Earth, like, when the whole Baby thing was going around, so Pan and Goku were unaffected because I think they were in space, and they just kind of missed the time when Baby was terrorizing Earth. So that's why I remember Baby didn't take it over. But if Baby did take over Goku's body, I think they would have been screwed. I don't think anybody could have taken him. What do you say? Yeah, saying? I mean, probably. I mean, at the end of the day, who who could have even stood a chance against uh, Baby other than Goku? And if Baby is Goku, what, Vegeta Vegeta didn't have the tail. So we couldn't exactly exploit the Blitz Wave in Golden Uzaro form in order to actually turn into a Super Saiyan 4, aside from when Bulma bombarded him with the with the with the Blitz Wave uh, machine. So no, I don't think anyone would be able to do anything to stop him. All right, all right. Well, let's move on here. Let's see. Why Baby said that Vegeta was the mightiest being in the universe? He didn't say Goku was. Was Vegeta stronger than Goku and GT? 
till Goku went Super Saiyan 4? I don't think so. No. I think that, I mean, it was pretty implied that Vegeta also got a power boost from Baby being inside of his body. But, I mean, I actually don't remember the quote when he said Vegeta was the mightiest being. I think he meant that he can make him the mightiest being, but... I think I mean, it's pretty clear that Goku was still the strongest, even as a kid. I've always personally believed that Goku's power declined a little bit when he became a kid. A lot of people disagree with that. It's just my theory. There's no there's no evidence to support it. But the reason I've always felt that Goku declined a little bit in power was because of the fact that he said he couldn't do a lot of attacks he could do as an adult. And also, when you compare a child's body to an adult's body, a child's body, I'm sure you would agree, Mike, is just naturally not as strong. I mean... How can a 10 year old beat a, a 20 year old in a fight? I mean, can you really, like, it, unless it's a really, really strong 10 year old, 99% of 10 year olds just can't beat adults. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you say to that, Mike? Honestly, at the same time, we don't know when he said it either. Because for all we know, he actually said this before he saw Goku turn, say, say Super Saiyan 3 or something like that. It could be that this is after he just uh, took over baby uh, Vegeta's body, but he never saw Goku actually transform into that full state. And of course, by the time Goku actually did go Super Saiyan 3 against Baby, it didn't make a difference because of his combined power with Vegeta. He just dominated him. But yeah, I think you make a lot of great points when you actually bring up the other things right so yeah i mean I, I i still think goku was stronger than him but that is interesting what you pointed out oh, all hey, right uh, take hey. this one mike <laughs> superman versus piccolo from gt i mean that's a really hard kind of question to ask because of the fact that i mean there's always that big question of oh superman versus goku and this and that personally i think that goku and say a gt piccolo could beat superman and i think the entire reason comes down to strength alone we all know that there's a number of different superman uh versions and of course even the most recent superman is not the superman from 10 years ago or from final crisis or, or something along those lines because of all the different retcons dc goes through but i really don't think that superman's combat speed is anywhere near the level to where he could take on someone like piccolo who's going many many times Times the speed of light and he could probably just punch him and, and blast him from all 360 degrees before superman could even react so overall i think piccolo could definitely take superman like in terms of his gt power but then again like obviously we're not going to say golden superman prime or somebody that ridiculously overpowered yeah the one that could like sneeze the universe out of existence yeah well honestly i mean guys and i'm being completely unbiased here i think that Superman is obviously a very strong character, and I don't know as much about Superman, but I'll tell you this much. It always comes down to how strong is Superman, because if you really think about it, I'm saying compared to the average human race, Raditz compared to the human race is Superman. I'm not saying he's as strong as Superman, but I'm saying compared to the human race, like he's the diff the gap between Raditz's <clears throat> power level and and the entire human race along with militaries and all that is so different that you got to think to yourself I mean, how strong would Superman be to also be compared to the Earth like that? Now, there's always these questions how Superman can move the Earth, all these things. But I think the main factor is, is you got to figure out how strong Superman is before you can make that judgment. Because you can make the argument that all of the Z fighters, even Yamcha, are Superman compared to the average human race. And, you know, that's essentially how I always look at it. So this is kind of an ambiguous question. But, I mean, in my honest opinion, I think in terms of fighting style and techniques... I think Piccolo was a much more advanced fighter, but I don't know how strong and fast uh, Superman is to really, you know, do this debate more effectively. Because if you really think about it, power and speed has a lot to do in Dragon Ball. Yes, you can beat a stronger, faster opponent. We've seen it a lot of times. But at the same time, if you are that much stronger or, or than somebody, there comes a point where your intelligence is not going to defeat them. For example, when Piccolo was fighting against... You, well, when he was fighting against Nappa, he had some pretty good techniques on how to beat him. Even though I don't think... Even though I think if Gohan attacked Nappa, I don't think it was going to kill him. I think it would have done a little bit of damage on him. And I think Piccolo really planned out how to, you know, at least try to hurt Nappa. So we, we, we never know how strong, you know, it can yeah. actually work out. But, I mean, I think it works out in terms of power. 
But I think also, like, just to bring up a little point, I think it kind of comes down to the Ultra Super Saiyan versus a much faster opponent, for example, because I don't think Superman's combat speed would be anywhere near close enough to the rest of the Sea Fighters, for example, or at least the Saiyan level characters like Piccolo and, and the Super Saiyans. I just don't think that he can move that fast in terms of punching and kicking and, and kind of dodging. So I think that no matter how much stronger he is than all of them, I don't think that his endurance is high enough to take all those blasts non-stop and I don't think that he can hit them uh, if they're going at full speed like the only way I think that he could hit them at full speed is if he's flying in a straight line and they're standing still right all right well I guess that I guess uh, this is this might actually be um, uh, this could be our actual featured question here all right let's see is there a limit to how strong a human can be in the Dragon Ball Z universe could there be a human who could legitimately fight like the likes of Cell or Boo well I mean, if you're saying, is there a human that could, can, that could fight them? I mean, Oob. Yeah. I I guess was reincarnated with boost power, so I guess he'd be the strongest, just regular human. Gohan's half human, you know. Goten trunks, you know, you know all the partial Saiyans. Pan, even though she's of all the other partial Saiyan, they're all really strong, but they're all partial Saiyans. So, partial Saiyans. So can you really, can you really say that they're, you know? stronger than them but at the same time i mean you gotta think about it like this i've always been a believer that dragon ball z is a show that that discusses and shows characters that have gone through extreme circumstances to be at the power that they are and if it was not for these extreme circumstances they might still be strong but they wouldn't be anywhere near as strong do you think krillin and tian and yamcha would be anywhere near as strong had they not trained with you know kami and mr popo had they not trained yeah. for the saiyans had they not gone to king kai's planet had they not trained you know in extreme circumstances for the android threat you know had they not gone to namek i mean like all of these things and in the the saiyans included too with their zenkai boost all of these little things that went through in their lives i think added to them going through these extreme circumstances that you know dragon ball multiverse points out and i think that theoretically yes you could have a human who could be as strong as seller boo but i think it would be a lot harder for a human to do it yeah. than a saiyan i've made a video on our saiyans the strongest race and you guys should check that out but at the same time i don't think that saiyans are weaker than humans i definitely think that humans are considerably you know weaker than saiyans are but at the same time if you look at the tuffles mike and i want you to you know add to that you know the tuffles i pointed out in that video that the saiyans were really strong but until they got their ozaru forms unlocked they weren't able to conquer the tuffles they had like a long war and they weren't able to conquer them until they got the power of the actual tuffle moon which is obviously implied a lot more in the anime and the filler than it actually was in the manga but I wanted to get your opinion on that whole tuffle thing in conjunction with the humans, how they use their technology to hold them off. Yeah, I mean, essentially, like, when we think about it, of course, all the Saiyans that we see in the series are exceptional Saiyans. They're elites of the elites, you know what I mean? And the common Saiyan, for all we know, can be a 5 power level, just like a human, but their power could be, like, multiplied by 10 because of the 10 times gravity. So, like, a common Saiyan, for all we know, could be, like, a 50 power level, or it could be, it could be something that's pretty weak compared to all the different Z fighters, it's even during, like, the beginning of Z. So... It makes perfect sense that even though they're a warrior race and they train and they fight, uh, that they could still be held off by, say, the Tuffles because they're superior technology. Because it's not like Vegeta is anywhere near common on the planet Vegeta, you know what I mean? He's he's a, the most elite of the elite, and King Vegeta is kind of implied to be, you know, even weaker than Vegeta when he was a kid, and he's the most powerful Saiyan next to Vegeta. So I think it makes perfect sense that in this case that they could be held off until they get their 10 times boost from uh, the Uzaro form. But on top of that, when it comes to the say, uh, the humans, I always personally felt that the only difference between the humans and the Saiyans is the rate of the humans' gains in terms of strength. So obviously the humans can get uh, very similar gains to Saiyans, but over a much longer period of time, because Saiyans can exploit Zenkais, they have an easier time gaining the uh, gains at a much faster rate, um, they seem to be a little bit more inclined to learn techniques faster. So I think overall, if, if the humans continue to train, 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 they can reach certain levels, but obviously Saiyans also stay in their prime longer. Right. 
Well, I mean, I guess that basically concludes it here. So yeah, guys, theoretically a human could possibly do it, but it'd just be a lot harder for them. But I do think with extreme circumstances and extreme training, they could probably do it, especially in the afterlife. I mean, because you have nothing to do with train. Oh, yeah. All right. Do you like Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks on PS2? I've never had a PlayStation 2, but I am a big fan of Mortal Kombat. I've played that game with a friend, but I've never owned it. But I'm basically a fan of all the Mortal Kombat games. The only ones I haven't played were the ones when I was way too young to play them. But So yeah, that's essentially uh, my thoughts on Mortal Kombat as a whole. Do you have yeah. anything to say, Mike? I love fighting games in general and Mortal Kombat, so I, I, I'm sure I would definitely enjoy it. Alrighty, so let's see here. Is Antarctica better than Greenland? Well, I've actually never been to Greenland. The part of Antarctica that I'm actually from, I usually just stay on a station, you know, while my dad goes out with his co-workers and they extract biological organisms. So, I mean, I can't really make a good comparison because I really don't know much about Greenland. But I mean, as far as Antarctica, there really isn't that much to do. You always have to stay inside because it's extremely cold. But, you know, once in a blue moon, when I actually go out to, like, extract biological organisms or anything along the sort, it's a, it's a pretty unique experience. And I think that everybody in, at the station, you know, we all use the same internet connection. You know, we all have to shower a very, very special way. I think the Antarctica station that I stay at personally is actually a, a fun experience for probably the average person. But after a while, I'll be honest, it could get boring at times. Happy birthday, Kwame Sensei. Okay, thank you. Happy late birthday, I guess. <laughs> All right. How strong is Super 17? Two androids weaker than Goku and Vegeta of the Boo Saga become as strong as somebody like Baby Vegeta at full power. It doesn't make sense. He could be at Boo Hunt level, I would say, at most. What are your thoughts, Kwame? Well, I mean, well, t for... uh, what you, can, you can go first, Mike. Well, for, for me, at least... I don't think that he's anywhere near as strong as, uh, let's say, Uzoro Baby form was. Like, doesn't it kind of say in GT that the main thing that he has going for him is his ability to absorb energy as well as to use that special uh, blocking ability? Like, on his own, I don't think he's super powerful, right? Well, I mean, I was kind of having this debate with Dragon Ball Nation yesterday. And... You know, he said that, you know, Sin Shenron and Omega Shenron are much stronger than Super 17. But I've always said there was never any direct proof. And the reason I say that is because with the exception that you might argue that Goku got a Zenkai boost, because I still think Zenkai boosts apply theoretically. They just aren't mentioned. Yeah. I think that Super 17 performed much better against Goku than Goku performed against uh, Omega Shenron and Sin Shenron because Goku did a little bit of damage on Sin and when he got his energy from his friends he actually you know you know held up pretty well against Omega Shenron and when you compare that with you know Super Android 17 Super 17 literally I mean he got hit a little bit by Kid Goku but it was obvious he was towing around he didn't even get touched by Super Saiyan 4 Goku I mean he was literally unscratched by him and people say, oh, well, it was because he got hit by that 10 times Kamehameha, which really overpowered him. And yeah, I do think that made him even more unstoppable. But Goku did not even touch Super 17 before he even fought him. And if Dragon Ball Nation is watching this, and I don't, I, if, if, he, if he ever gets a chance, if Dragon Ball Nation is watching this, he knows exactly what I'm talking about because we were arguing and I was saying that Super Android 17 was never even touched by Super Saiyan 4 Goku. He didn't even take any damage from him even before Goku did the 10 times Kamehameha. He had the edge over the whole fight. He was toying with him. So I'm saying that that leads me to believe that Super 17 is a lot stronger than people give him credit for. Super Saiyan 4 Goku lost badly. He was so, he was in such a desperate situation that he was contemplating blowing himself up. So that leads me to believe that I think a lot of people underestimate how strong Super 17. You could argue he was stronger than regular Sin Shenron, but that might go as far as to stretch, but I'm just doing it based off of performances. What do you say, Mike? Well, didn't Super 17 absorb all of the powers of the Z fighters before he fought Goku? Because if, if you remember, before Goku actually showed up, he beat everyone down. So didn't he, didn't he absorb their energy before he actually fought Goku? Yeah, but the point I'm trying to say is he was still dominating them to absorb their energy. Yeah. 
it, it's really hard to figure out. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really make sense that two 17s would be so much stronger than everyone else. But, I mean, you do make a lot of good points. It does seem like he really puts up a good fight against tons of different sea fighters. Right. So, I mean, Vegeta was basically reduced to, like, I mean, a, a punching doll. And, guys, I've been... A lot of people, I mean, not that many people, as a matter of fact. Some people have accused me of being a Vegeta hater. Um, I don't know where that rumor comes from. I've talked to Mike, Black and Fist. Black and Fist, too. Black and Fist are, and I are always known as, like, Vegeta haters. I don't know where that rumor came from. But Vegeta's my third favorite character in the series, right behind, you know, Gohan and Piccolo. And, you know, because of the fact that of that, I, I, I love Vegeta as a character. I have nothing against him personally. I'm just saying he has been the punching bag of Dragon Ball Z for every single major series. And when I said that, a lot of people may disagree with that, but it's the truth. I mean, if you really think about it, Vegeta has been severely beaten by every single major villain in the Dragon Ball Z series, including yeah. Android 18, if you count her as one of those two. He, he was killed by Frieza, he was badly beaten by Cell, he was badly beaten by Android 18, and he was badly beaten by Majin Buu. So, I just made that statement, and Mike, you know, he said that he agreed with it, and I don't think that deserves, you know, any negative feedback, because I was just telling the truth. No, I mean, Vegeta's a great character. I think everyone will agree to that. I mean, he's perhaps the most dynamic character out of everyone, aside from Piccolo, and uh, at the end of the day, I mean... He does get beat down. I mean, Toriyama wrote him to get wrote him to get beaten down. I mean, that's on Toriyama. It's not our fault that he did that. Yeah. But anyways, that's just for the very small minority of people who might think I'm a Vegeta hater. So I guess I hope I cleared that up. All right, let's see. What if Vegeta fought Garlic Jr. by himself in the filler saga? Would he have won? I'm pretty sure. I mean, considering the fact that Gohan and Piccolo and Krillin were able to take him out, mostly Gohan. I would think that, you know, Vegeta would be able to do the same thing, too, considering he's considerably stronger than the three of them. So I'd say, yeah, uh, Vegeta would take him out. What do you say? Well, the thing about that, though, is that Garlic Jr. only lost in both movies because he opened the dead zone. I mean, he's immortal, so technically he could just keep fighting Vegeta until Vegeta's out of energy and kill him. Because if you notice, like, when Piccolo blasted him through, like, he was able to regenerate instantly because of his, Im his immortality. So, I think as long as he doesn't open the dead zone, like, unless Vegeta, like, finds some way to completely incinerate him, which seems like a possibility, but I'm sure he would still come back, like, I, I don't really know how that would work out in the end, but I feel like unless he opens the dead zone, it's a possibility that he could be, theoretically, anyone. Well, the way I looked at it is I just looked at, at Vegeta the same way I looked at Gohan. If he was, like, fighting alongside with them... If he opens up the dead zone, I'd say with Vegeta, it'd be a lot easier to take care of Oh, yeah, of him. Vegeta would just flick him into it. I mean, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be hard at all. <laughs> right. All right, so that does it for this one here. Let's see the next one. Take this one, Mike. Who is the strongest villain from DBZ, not counting Battle of Gods and Fukatsu no F before baby Vegeta is born? Hmm. Well, baby Vegeta is in GT, so we wouldn't be counting that either. Hmm. I mean, well, what's Buhan, your opinion, definitely. I mean, there's, there, I don't think there's any contest for Buhan being the strongest, uh, being the strongest villain in, in Dragon Ball Z. I mean, honestly, if you want to be ultra specific and say Buhan, I agree with you 100. percent But you could just say in general, Majin Buu as a whole would oh, yeah. be the the strongest villain from Z. I mean, I mean, if you're counting movies, I mean. I personally think Boo is stronger than Janemba because of the because of how Goku's Goku's performance with him. Oh yeah, and I think that Haruta Garn his power is kind of weird because it didn't seem like if you if you go back and you watch the Rata the Dragon movie, it didn't necessarily seem that Goku was stronger than Haruta Garn. It seemed like he kind of used his techniques against him. And kind of outsmarted Harutagarn, but it didn't necessarily seem like Goku was stronger. Oh no, he, he was just getting beat him. down by Harutagarn. The only reason that he beat him is because he exploited his weakness, which was his rage. Right. So, I mean, that's honestly my opinion on, you know, the whole matter. So I guess we both say Majin Buu as a whole. Oh yeah. Buhan versus General Rildo. Hmm. hmm. What do you say to that, Mike? I mean... I kind of feel like siding with Buhan, to be honest, because we, I mean, 
it de- I guess obviously it depends on the General Rildo we're talking about. If we're talking about General Rildo in his truest, most powerful form, it's it's really kind of a toss up. I mean, I know a lot of people try and say that Goku is equal to Super Saiyan three Goku in his base form, and if that's the case, then General Rildo almost certainly would be stronger. But it's not like Goku made it seem like General Rildo was that much stronger than Boo when he fought him. He just said, "Oh, he's stronger than Majin Boo," but he didn't say Boo Han. You know, it's it's really hard to figure out exactly who he's talking about. Right. So, I mean, as a whole, I mean, you got to say to yourself that you know, Boo Han. I, uh, I just think that General Rildo. Uh, I would think that by GT because of how much because you remember Gohan fought him too. Yeah. And, you know, Gohan was obviously declining significantly in power, and General Rildo is essentially a robot. So I would think by that point, General Rildo would have been stronger than Gohan, Gohan was. And if Je- if he was basing Rildo's power on, on the, the, you know, the actual Dragon Ball Z version of Majin Buu, then I would say by that point, it kind of makes sense to say that, you know, if General Rildo would be stronger than Gohan and Gohan was declining, it could still be in the realm of possibility that Buhan could still be stronger than him. So I, I think it's kind of a toss-up because I just think yeah. that a lot of people base General Rildo's power because of Gohan, but Gohan was declining so much, we don't know how much, you know, he actually was. So I'd have to say Buhan because I think that version of of Buhan is so much stronger, I, I just can't see it. But and Gohan didn't even have his ultimate form anymore, so... Exactly. And remember, that Gohan is weaker than Buhan, so... Yeah. Yeah, I would say Buhan probably takes it. And remember, if anything bad happens, I mean, even though he's machined, you know, Bu has a bunch of techniques he could use to possibly, you know, defeat him. He could absorb him, which I don't think would probably work because he's the machine. He might, you know, turn him into chocolate, which might not also work. But, I mean, I don't know. Majin Buu is, is the type of villain that, because of his regenerative abilities, it's very difficult to deal with him. Yeah. All right, let's see. Golden Frieza versus Baby Vegeta. Very good question. I don't want to sound generic. And I, I know that a lot of people don't necessarily like it when I say this. But... I've always been a believer that if you if you take the Fukatsu no F Battle of Gods universe and you apply it to the Dragon Ball Z realm, meaning GT does theoretically exist. I'm not saying it's canon. I'm saying if you if you're saying that GT and Z exist in the same universe, it makes no sense for Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta we could be weaker than their Super Saiyan God forms because it doesn't make sense why they wouldn't use that form instead even though it obviously makes sense because gt came way before you know battle of gods and fukatsu no F did it it causes a lot of confusion so by that nature i would have to go with baby vegeta but there's other reasons that dragon ball nation you know has explained in a lot of his videos where he was discussing why he thought super saiyan 4 was stronger and what he did was he based it on the fight against baby vegeta and he based it on the fact that goku would have been a lot stronger in his, you know, his regular base Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3 forms than, you know, what he actually fought, you know, Beerus. And considering the fact that, you know, Baby Vegeta dominated him to a similar degree the way Beerus did, it kind of, you know, fights on parallel to say that. And yeah. even though it can be a little inconsistent at times, I just think that that's a pretty interesting argument that he provides. So at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Baby Vegeta in the same timeline. If you're going by a separate timeline, I mean... That baby Vegeta argument still kind of hard to dissuade against and Also considering the fact that Frieza's power as was as, as was stated in the movie not really much of a spoiler He declines really really fast if you could just hold him off for a bit I mean, he's really not that hard to beat so I mean, you know for Goku and Vegeta's case So that's honestly my opinion on the whole matter Yeah Do you have anything to add Mike? I pretty much agree with everything you just said all right, why don't you take this one, Mike? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You look like a monkey and belong in a zoo. All righty, well, uh, <laughs> this, uh, we went back a, a bit because a lot of you guys wanted me to answer some of the older questions. You know, this was actually, you know, probably around the time I did my birthday special, which was on May 11th. So, yeah, thanks for the happy birthday, even though it's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit off of my birthday, but, you know, thanks anyways. All right, let's now, see. Now everyone's going to think I'm a racist. <laughs> Take this one, Mike. Super Saiyan 3 Adult Goku from GT versus Baby Vegeta First Form. Honestly, 
I still don't think it's going to matter. I still think Baby Vegeta is going to take him. Like I don't like I don't think that there's ever stated that the Super Saiyan three Kid Goku is like even if he is weaker, I don't think it's anywhere near significant enough to make it where he could somehow take on Baby Vegeta in his first form. Well, the thing is, is that he was Goku was losing and he didn't really. But but I mean, <sighs> Goku, when he fought baby Vegeta as a kid, as a Super Saiyan 3, he never really had that much of a chance. And I'll be right back, guys. All righty, guys. So uh, there was a little bit of a technical error. But what I was basically saying about the Super Saiyan 3 Goku versus baby Vegeta I personally, you know, I, I have always thought that, you know, Goku did lose some power, you know, when he became a kid, only because of the whole development of bodies thing. And, you know, I just feel like because of that, that would lead me to believe that, you know, Goku as a kid, maybe if he was Super Saiyan 3 as an adult, and he allowed the fight to drag on a little bit more, maybe he could have beaten him. Because you got to remember, guys, baby Vegeta obviously <clears throat> sorry he has the power of vegeta and if you consider the fact that if goku ha was a was you know a full super saiyan 3 we never really got to see how much he could probably rev up in terms of his power because the fight was just getting started and goku basically just run out of ran out of gas so i don't think that's a really good judgment to make in terms of saying that he wouldn't be strong enough uh, enough but i mean we never know what do you say yeah. like well, I mean, it's never really explicitly said how much power he lost, if he lost a lot of power. So I still feel like it'll go in the same direction that it went in just from what we saw. But, I mean, so many things in GT are inconsistent, so we really have no idea. Yeah. Well, I guess that's that question there. What if Logic joined the Sea Fighters? Ugh. Uh, what do you say to this one, Mike? I I, I think you you have a pretty good judgment on you know that you like, like you know additional what if scenarios. Yeah, Legic just wasn't powerful enough to make a difference. Like he got beat by Kid Goku without going Super Saiyan three. So in the end, it's really not going to make any difference if he joined the Z Fighters. He he just wasn't strong enough to make any difference in the overall future. I mean, he could have made a difference in terms of, like, you know, possibly helping him fight throughout some of their space missions, but in terms of the baby Super 17, I mean, if you really think about it, you know, if you really think about it, Mike, in GT, Goku and Vegeta were the only characters that even made a difference in terms of power. Like, the others were completely irrelevant. Yeah. Like, Goku basically, you know, helped through the Super... Well, the Super 17 arc was kind of weird because 18 jumped in to kind of talk her brother out of it. But Goku beat Baby, you know, with the help of his friends. And, and you know, if when you factor in, you know, throughout the Super 17 arc, they had to fuse Goku and Vegeta. And you had to also factor in that Baby using Vegeta's power also can serve as a tool to say that Vegeta's power was enough to make a difference. So, in GT, Goku and Vegeta were the only characters who po whose powers really made a big difference. The others were better off just helping them by donating their energy or just being role characters that, you know, didn't really get that much shine. Yeah. All right. Why Legic? <laughs> oh, this is another Legic question. Why Legic isn't a playable character in any DBZ games, even in DBH Dragon Ball Heroes? I think is what he's saying. He isn't, but Rildo is playable. What are your thoughts on this? How do you feel about him not being playable anywhere? Even on YouTube, I didn't see a mod for Legic, but for Budokai Tenkaichi G three. I mean. The dude Legic. wasn't a big character. I mean, he, he he was there for like three episodes, right? I mean, he might have looked cool, but he didn't do anything. And he wasn't that powerful either. I mean... I don't know what everyone's obsession with this dude is. <laughs> it's not like he ever did anything. He got his ass beat by a kid. Like, let's be honest. I think Legic is a cool character in terms of the way he looks. He has a pretty cool design. I think he yeah. had a sword, if I remember correctly, or a pole that broke. Goku just broke, but yeah, I mean he beat Trunks pretty easily, but uh, which doesn't really say much. <laughs> Trunks was in his base form too. I mean, if Trunks yeah. in his base form could be severely injured in a car accident, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and you know, Pan is Pan is so weak that she can't even carry future Trunks. I mean, when he fell down on her, which is yeah. kind of weird because she should be more than strong enough to take him off her. 
didn't you get a question years ago like asking you or or a long time ago asking you like if if trunks could be injured in a car doesn't that make like car crashes stronger than trunks or something stupid like that i i don't remember the exact question but i mean i i've always found it weird how he you know the car accident you know just hurt trunks that badly yeah um, I mean, he almost looked as badly damaged as that actual taxi driver itself. But, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't GT. know. That, that was always weird to me. Um, I just think that Legic as a whole, I mean, I, I think he's a cool character, guys. I don't know that if there's really much to say. I don't know why he's not a playable character. Maybe they might put him in. But if there's a GT character that they're going to put in, I think that there are a lot better options to put in, you know, than Legic. If you look at Xenoverse, if you look at... You know, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, why don't they put in, you know, the whole full seven star Dragon Ball, I'm sorry, the seven Shadow Dragons, you know, you could put in Oceanish Shenron, you know, yeah. you can put in a Ice variety Shenron. of other characters, you could put in the, the, all the Shadow Dragons, you could put in, you know, I mean, you could really put in Hellfighter 17 if you want to, you can put in, you know, a lot of different villains that they fought on their way, so I, I just don't think... Dude, if you're going to go with Legic, he's really the best option. So that's yeah. just my honest opinion. He's a cool character, but that's all I really got to say. Sorry, Kwame, I'm not allowed to send things, but I can make something and send it through As.FM. And happy birthday. Thanks, David. I mean, like I said before, I kind of went back for you guys. But um, <clears throat> essentially, yeah, that's that's basically how it goes in terms of As.FM. If you just send me something... You know, I, I can see it here. I can see a variety of things, but not necessarily everything. But uh, yeah, thanks, David. All right. Do you think that Eng every English dub of Dragon Ball franchise should be released in America and Europe? For example, the whole ocean dub. I mean, if fans want to see it, why not? I mean, if you really want me to be honest with you, you could find it online. If you yeah. really want to see it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not trying to endorse using alternative methods to watch. But, I mean, if you really, really want to see it, it's not hard. I mean, the thing about the internet is that everything you want in life is basically a couple clicks away. So, I think if you really want to see it, just look at it online. But I don't think they'd ever do it because I think they factor in that online searches make it kind of irrelevant. I mean, for example, there are so many, like, Yo Son Goku and his friends return... If you look at, you know, the the episode of Bardock, the original plan to eradicate the Saiyans, all of these things that I just mentioned were all fan subbed. Like fans subbed all of the things that I just mentioned. Like they never officially had like an English release. So when you factor all of that in, I mean, fans basically do a lot of the work for you. If Toei doesn't want to do the subs and work with Funimation, fans are just going to sub it themselves. And I just did a video, I did a video with Geekdom and Super J and they were talking about all this stuff that Toei kind of makes it hard for people. So I want you to factor that in too. Yep. Right, happy birthday. Thanks, Tyler. All right, take this one, Mike. What fusion teased in Dragon Ball Z but never actually shown did you want to see the most? Well, in my case, I would have loved to see Goku fuse with Hercule or uh, or Dende, but uh, I mean, overall, I know that it couldn't have happened, but Goku fusing with Piccolo would have been really cool. Um, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to see Goku fuse with Piccolo because like, they're basically two completely different races, literally two different alien races, and you know, that would have been interesting. Um, You'd I think have a Goku that could regenerate. Even though it's kind of weird from a sexual point of view, Gokan yeah. would have been a pretty interesting, you know, fusion to see how Goku fusing with his son would have worked against uh, Super Boo, so. I always thought it was funny that uh, Goku was like, oh, I hope that Shishi doesn't make me go to school. Well, I'm sure that Go uh, Gohan would be like, oh, I hope that Chi-Chi still doesn't want to, you know, do things that she does with my dad. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kwame. Can you send, can you do a video Sonic and Goku like if they're universe cross paths and I have two questions. Link and Zelda versus Goku and Chi-Chi. Well, because Goku's on the team, that makes it not even a fight. And two, can Cooler achieve the same power as Freezer or go beyond and explain for both your questions? Well, Link and Zelda versus Goku and Chi-Chi. I love Zelda. I'm a big Zelda fan. I think Link and Zelda are pretty strong in their own right. But, I mean, you got to consider, I mean, Chi-Chi's very strong for a regular human too. Yeah. 
But I think just having Goku on the team makes it hard for me to believe Link and Zelda can beat them. Just Goku alone essentially nullifies that entire fight. Even Maybe Chi Chi can arguably even Chi Chi can arguably beat both of them. Right. I mean, if you said like Videl and Chi Chi, that would have been a more realistic fight. But Goku and Chi Chi, Goku can beat both of them with a blink of an eye by himself. So I think that nullifies it. You know, and, and I've played Zelda enough to know. I mean, there's nothing that Link has ever shown from my knowledge of playing Zelda. And I've played at least 80% of the games. I don't think there's ever been anything that Link has shown that would be comparable to a Dragon Ball Z character in terms of speed, in terms of strength. You know, I mean, the guy has to basically use those uh, those those boots. I don't remember what they're called. I think they're Pegasus boots. I think yeah. he, he needs to use Pegasus boots just to move moderately fast. And he's still not moving as fast as a Dragon Ball character. So, yeah, Goku's much stronger. Can Cooler achieve the same power as Frieza? You should watch my my previous Ask.fm for that. I go more in depth. I think theoretically Cooler can. Um, he said he was stronger. And I do think that, you know, maybe Frieza's race is capable of doing it, but we just don't know. I mean, it's all up for grab. What do you say? Well, I also did a video about this, as in what if King Cool or Cooler went to Namek instead of Frieza and talked in depth about Cooler's power. Honestly, I think overall Cooler was weaker than Frieza until he went into his final form. And even then, considering the disparity between his power and Goku's, I don't think he was that much more powerful. Um, in terms of the golden form, I don't think he could, just because the fact that the way that it's set up is that the form Cooler has is the next evolution. So I really don't think that he biologically could do it just the way that it's set up. But at the same time, no, because he's dead. So let's let's leave him dead. <laughs> yeah. So that basically does it in a nutshell. Super Saiyan 4 Goku versus Nova Shenron. Well, Dragon Ball Nation and I have discussed this before several times. He believes that Goku was toying with Nova. I don't think Goku was toying with Nova as much as he was suggesting. But I do think that if the fight dragged on, I think Goku would have had the advantage... I think Goku did seem to have a little bit of an edge, even though Nova, Nova seemed a little bit faster. So I'm going to have to go with, you know, Super Saiyan for Goku, considering the fact that, I mean, he did a little bit of damage on on uh, on uh, Sin Shenron. And Sin Shenron basically one-shotted Nova. So that yeah. would lead me to believe that. But if you also factor it in like this, don't uh, from just a little bit of a fan fiction point of view, just for fun, wouldn't it have been so cool, and I, I asked Dragon Ball Nation to do a fight on Xenoverse, you know, to kind of showcase it. It would have been really cool to see Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta versus Nova and Ice, like a tag team battle. That would have been really, really cool. I'm not factoring in, like, the power differences. I'm just saying it would have been cool to see, like, you know, Goku and Vegeta go up against, like, these evil twin Shadow Dragons. That would have been a really awesome fight. What do you say? Uh, yeah, that would have been a really cool fight, but overall, I think Goku would be able to beat Nova, unless, of course, he used that Hell Oven kind of thing that he used against uh, Shin, um, or Sin, I mean. Uh, you know, that, that ball that he surrounded him in and then yeah. heated it up to the point where he was going to destroy his body. I think that Goku wouldn't have been able to survive that, but I think that he probably would have been able to beat Nova other than that. I don't think he would allow himself to get caught in that. Well, let me ask you the same question I was asking Dragon Ball Nation, you know, in regards to Nova and Ice. First of all, yeah. how strong do you think Nova and Ice are compared to each other? Who do you think is stronger? Nova is probably stronger just because of what he was able to do to uh, Omega. But do you think he's significantly stronger or do you think they're in the same realm? Um, I think he's a good amount stronger. I think his techniques are what puts him over the edge. And also, how do you think Goku and Vegeta would have performed against Nova and Ice had they had a tag team fight? Which Vegeta are we talking about? Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan 4? 4? They would have beat him. Hmm. Okay. Like, I, don't, I don't think that they would have had any chance of losing. Hmm. But it would have still been somewhat of a competitive fight. Oh yeah, up to a certain point. But after that, I mean, they would they would win definitely, in my opinion. So you don't. So and and last question: What do you think about Ice's power? Like, how strong do you think Ice is compared to Super Saiyan 4 Goku, and also compared to Vegeta? Well, I definitely think Ice is weaker, just because of the fact that he had to do that whole sneak attack thing that he did. But uh, overall, like, I mean, he's not super weak compared to them. I just think that he's like a little bit weaker than. Uh, Nova was. All right. Let's see. Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta GT versus Ice. Oh, wow. Well, here, where is, here's the Ice question. What do you say to this, Mike? I would say Ice would win. Yeah, if, it, if we're just talking Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, I would say... I'd say Ice could... I mean, 
I mean, Ice was able, like, okay, the one reason I was thinking Dragon Ball Nation, I kind of disagree with Dragon Ball Nation, because he thinks Ice is a lot weaker than Nova. I don't think he's a lot, but I think he's weaker, but not that much. And the reason is, even though Ice was doing sneak attacks on Goku, he was able to damage him. Like, yeah. he, like, it, it's not like, Go, it's not like his attacks were completely unaffected. So, but Goku got hurt by glass in GT, so... It, oh, yeah, true, but... <laughs> I mean, that leads me to believe that I think Ice can do some damage on Goku, and I think that because of that, that leads me to believe that, you know, he would pro it would probably require at least a Super Saiyan 4 to defeat, you know, Nova and Ice. So, I think that's definitely my opinion on that. Yeah. All right, take this one. Hey, this is Sufian. When Kid Buu was about to destroy the Earth, what would have happened if Goku and Vegeta picked up their kids instead of Hercule and Dende? Do you think you would make a video on this? Or do you think you can make a video on this? Please, this is a great what-if topic for you to do. Hmm. Uh, what if they picked them up? I mean, they could have used the Namekian Dragon Balls to bring back Hercule and Dende, I guess. But, uh, I mean, overall, I mean, if they picked up Go Gohan, he would have just been able to destroy Kid Buu. So, I mean... Technically, I guess it would have been a better situation if that actually happened, right? I mean, if you factor it in like this, I mean, I've always felt that even though they went through the whole spirit bomb thing, I think the spirit bomb was actually an ineffective method to use. I've always felt that if they brought Gohan and potentially Gotenks in the form of Go Goten and Trunks over to the Supreme Kai planet, I think that would have made the situation a lot easier against Kid Buu. Yeah. Because well, you gotta Go factor Goku in... even said that. Huh? Goku even actually suggested that because yeah. when I mean... Vegeta was like, oh, I have another method, and, v and Goku was like, oh, you're gonna bring Gohan to fight him, right? So Gohan, or, uh, Goku basically was like, oh yeah, Gohan could beat him. You know what I mean? Hmm. But, I mean, he said Go you said Gohan and the boys, but, I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, Goku was gassed at that point. Vegeta was pretty badly beaten up. At that point, I think that it would have been smarter to put Gotenks and Gohan versus Kid Buu because I don't think in any world Kid Buu can take Gotenks and Gohan coming him at the same time. And if he, I, you could argue, I personally think that Gotenks and Gohan after, you know, a lot of things I've discussed with a lot of fans over the years, I think Gotenks and Gohan are actually individually strong enough. A lot of people might disagree, and I respect that. But, you know, when you fight, and, and it's a long discussion, you know, um, yeah, I made plenty of, you know, basically in a nutshell, it's the fact that the main reason is Goku and Vegeta seemed somewhat confident when he, they powered down to Kid Buu and they didn't even want to fuse. <coughs> Whereas Goku was terrified to fight against Super Buu. Yeah. When he was fighting him, and he said, we stand no chance. But when he was fighting against Kid Buu, he's like, okay, he's all alone now. But he, Goku's smart enough to know that if, if Kid Buu was light years stronger than Goku and Vegeta, they still know that they would have to fuse to beat him. So that leads me to believe that Kid Buu would be stronger than, you know, I'm sorry, Kid Buu would be weaker than Buu Han, Buu Tanks. It's very arguable if he's even stronger than Kid Super Buu. I personally have learned to think that Super Buu is even stronger than Kid Buu. So... That makes yeah, me, me believe that if Gotenks and and Gohan came there, it would have been an actual much better situation. Hercule would have been dead, but I mean, what much would Hercule do? But at the end of the day, I still think it's a winning situation for the Z Fighters. Yeah, I think that that would have been a much better scenario. Yeah. Ooh, GT versus Kid Buu. Oh, very good one. Why don't you take this one, Mike? Well, didn't GT specifically say that when Oob fused with Boo, he was able to get the full power of Kid Boo. Hmm. Because if that's the case, then obviously Kid Boo wins. But I mean, I mean, I would think that you know, Kid uh, Oob should be stronger without even fusing with Boo than Kid Boo. I don't. I don't think that when Oob fused with with Boo, I don't think that made him as strong as Kid Boo. I think that probably made him stronger because you got to remember that Oob was training with Goku for a while. We don't know how strong he was. Yeah. But Oob held his own against Goku in his base form. And Goku in his base form, even as a kid, was said to be around the strength of Rildo. Yeah. So what that's telling me is that if Goku 
And okay, if Oob basically gains the power of Fapu, I would think that, and if it makes him like this pure form or whatever, I would think that would put him way above the Boos because, I mean, number one, you gotta remember, Fapu is not that much weaker than Kid Buu. Yes, he's considerably weaker, but it's not like, like Fapu compared to Kid Buu is like comparing, comparing Goku to Frieza. Like Kid Fapu could still do some damage and hold him off for a while. It's not like. It's not like when Fat Buu went up against Kid Buu, like he was a complete, utter, utterly like he stood absolutely no chance. He put up a much better fight than Vegeta did. So, yeah. you know, so that would obviously say that Fat Buu, in my opinion, I think that is not that much weaker than Kid Buu. And when you factor that in, I think that you got to say to yourself, well, if he's not that much weaker than, you know, Kid Buu, even though I think Kid Buu is still a good amount stronger, that would lead me to believe that Oob probably wouldn't be that much stronger either. Because, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, Goku, uh, Oob fusing with Oob, how much would that really gain? It's kind of like putting two Boos together. So, yeah. I think it'd probably be stronger than the Boo forms. I don't know how far. Maybe not as strong as Boo Han, but I think it would have definitely given him a lot more power. Yeah, I mean, logically, it makes perfect sense to say that. Also, you base it, I mean, but he still didn't stand a chance against Baby Vegeta, so... No. That tells you it clearly didn't do a lot. All right. Take this one. Majub versus Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta from GT. Well, I definitely think Majub would beat him. Yeah, but I mean, are you sure? Because you remember, Baby Vegeta, you know, beat Oob and Baby increased Oob Vegeta's power, but how much? Well, Baby Vegeta beat Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So I think that, I don't think that, uh, I mean, I would, I would have to assume that he went up by a lot because the fact that, I mean, I really doubt that Vegeta at Super Saiyan 2 was anywhere near as powerful as Goku at that point. So I, I, would, I would have to think that Baby's influence increases power tremendously. Hmm. So you so think, think Baby's think influence in, incre gave him a bigger power up than we give him credit for? Probably, yeah. I, I mean, personally, I just think that, I don't think that they would just give Maju that kind of power increase unless it was you know he was going to be above at least Vegeta you know what I mean yeah I you know I'm Mike I'm not gonna lie to you I think you've convinced me to think about it. I mean Maju should be stronger because I mean I mean but but, but Maju still didn't even stand a chance against baby Vegeta baby Vegeta was kind of toying with him with that energy blast yeah so I mean that would lead me to believe that if Maju is weaker than baby Vegeta then you know, it would make sense for regular Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta to also be weaker because he got so much of a boost that he could be stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a pretty good, good enough reason to say that Oob would probably be able to beat regular Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. Yeah. But not baby Super Saiyan 2 or whatever. We don't even know if baby <laughs> and Vegeta's bodies is Super Saiyan. It's kind of weird, to be yeah. honest with you. It just looks like he kind of like morphs him or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, this is Sufsan. I know you say Gogeta isn't canon, but theoretically, if Goku and Vegeta did the fusion dance, wouldn't they look just like the one from Fusion Reboard? Well, why not? I mean, it's not canon, but I'm sure if they intended it to be canon, it would look like that because, I mean, the, the outfit is similar to Gotenks, who also does the dance. And I've always felt that, like, yeah. theoretically, I mean, I've always felt that the movies kind of portray things in different ways and if it was to be canon that's how they think they would interpret it so even though gogeta isn't canon in terms of like being in a uh, part of the original manga and anime you know he does theoretically exist yeah. and i think that if they w if he was to theoretically exist it makes no reason why he wouldn't look like that for him so i don't mind that i mean the only thing that i would have to say is that you know akira toriyama did like kind of take that idea and flip it on its head in Dragon Ball Minus when he kind of redesigned Bardock and he changed a lot of different designs from what we had believed that they looked like before. So it could just be like Toriyama sees Gogeta and is like, you know, I'll do my own version. Right. All right. Well, I guess that does it for this one. Let's see. We're going to close this up really soon. Okay. And Hey, this is Sufyan. If Tights is Bulma's sister, why doesn't Bulma ever mention it throughout the series? Well, there's a very simple, honest <laughs> answer to this. And it has nothing to really do with Dragon Ball. The reason is, is because, guys, Toriyama obviously didn't really think about Tights early in Dragon Ball. And, you know, Dragon Ball Minus was written a long time after Dragon Ball was. 
So he can just kind of say, hey, guess what? Vegeta has a brother, Tarbo. Hey, guess what? Boma has a sister, Tights. And it doesn't make any sense because Vegeta says, oh, the final Saiyan surviving left. It doesn't make sense how Tarbo exists. No. But the main reason is, is, you know, it takes, he wrote that after and, you know, people kind of have to wink at why he didn't say it earlier because the main reason is he didn't think about her back then. That's the honest answer. And that's the honest answer, I think. So Tarbo and Tights, I put them in the same category. You know, I just think that Toriyama just didn't think about that, you know, 18 years ago. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, but I think she's an interesting character if you ever read the Dragon Ball Minus volume, but, I mean, that's all I really have to say here. Hey, Sufyan and Kwaman. Hey, hey, this is Sufyan and Kwaman. Make a Dragon Ball Q on why Bardock isn't the first Super Saiyan. Trust me, people will stop asking if you do. Well, okay. <laughs> um, Sufyan, I, I, I like that you're asking me all these questions. You're one of my long-term subscribers. I've seen you a lot. Sufyan Saida, I, I remember correctly. And the thing is, Sufyan, I, I don't necessarily think it's necessary to put a video on that because I really don't think it's educating anything. I, I personally think, you know, it's just it's just fan fiction in my opinion because you got to remember, guys, it doesn't, it does not, I know Dragon Ball Z is a fictional show, but it does not make any sense that being blasted by an energy that's going to destroy the planet is going to turn you back in time. Nobody can convince me that that makes sense. It makes no sense, and I'm not going to lie to you. I've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, Kwame, do you think Super Saiyan Bardock can you can uh, be, you know, Frieza? And, and that's fine, and a lot, a lot of you might not know this, but guys, it doesn't make sense to be canon. Yes, there was a little manga adaptation to it, but that doesn't mean it's canon. You see, the thing is, is that, guys, it just doesn't make any sense for that to happen. So nope. that's why I agree with it. It, it, it. You just can't, you can't tell me that Bardock being blasted with the blast is going to send him back in time to fight Frieza's ancestor. To me, it's obvious that they created the episode of Bardock to illustrate how the threat of the Super Saiyan passed on through Frieza's ancestors. That's the whole purpose of it. Bardock fights one of Frieza's ancestors, and it, he was, and even though it was Bardock who fought, you know, chilled, it was obvious that they were just using Bardock as a character that we already can relate to, instead of just some random Saiyan that we never saw before, and they just used him to basically illustrate how the threat of the Super Saiyan went through generation to generation. So it just makes no sense to me how, you know, Bardock, you know, can do that. What do you say? Bardock is just a fun what if scenario just for fans who enjoy the Bardock character. It shouldn't be taken seriously, and even if you do the Dragon Ball Q, you'll still have people asking the question. Alright, so let's just spitball these last four questions here. Hey, Sufjan, if you were stuck on an alien and you can only bring three things, what would they be? And no means of transportation. Wow, that sucks. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't bring a boat. Uh... Man, I'd bring a house, I'd bring my computer, and I'd bring electricity. Because if <laughs> I could, uh, actually, that's, that's I mean, because I'm assuming the island would already have food on it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as long as I got my internet, if I got a house, and hey, I'll just chill on there, and, you know, I can send somebody a message to come pick me up someday. All right, there. <laughs> but with the internet, you can ask for help, right? So Yeah. All right, so that's basically it there. What do you say to that, Mike? I forgot to ask you. What would you bring? Three things. Um, I would bring the supplies to build a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring the supplies to build a computer to hire someone to drive that boat. And I would bring a bunch of women to fill the boat with. Oh, okay. All right, <laughs> so let's see. Hey, this is a fun. And does Goten know about Uncle Raditz? Well, I'm... Um, I think it's possible that Gohan or maybe even Goku or maybe even Chi Chi if she knows anything about it. I'm sure they would have shared a story, you know, because I'm sure, like, <laughs> you gotta think about this. The stories that Gohan and the rest of the Z Fighters go through are pretty crazy, and they kind of hinted at that in the history of Trunks with Team Four Star. How when Go Future Gohan was like, well, when I was a toddler, my uncle kidnapped me, 
And then I was then kidnapped by Piccolo. He put me to live somewhere for six months, left me alone to fend for myself. Then he came, he trained me. Then I fought two other aliens from outer space. I almost died. A bunch of people died. Then I went to Namek, fought even more stronger aliens. A lot of people died there too. Then my dad beats Frieza. We come home. Frieza comes back again. Some weird kid from the future kills him. Well, actually, no, I'm actually being wrong because that wouldn't make sense because Trunks wouldn't come there. But the whole point is, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of paraphrasing it, but the whole point is, is like, they were trying to point out that Gohan's lifestyle, if you really think about the weird, crazy stuff that he's gone through, is crazy. Like, being kidnapped by your evil uncle alien and all this stuff and being trained by Piccolo and all this. And then the Andrews show up and then they kill everybody again. It's just crazy, guys. And now he's like, well, now I'm here with you. And, like, it was just so funny how they said it. I, think, I think that was one of the funniest Team Four Star lines of all time. What do you say, Mike? Uh, yeah, I mean, that must have been a really awkward conversation when Gohan finally sat down with Videl and explained everything to her. I mean, her, her face must have been, you know, priceless. Yeah, but I'm sure you would think Gohan's at least heard about Raditz. Oh, Goten? Yeah, Goten, I mean, yeah. Th probably. Yeah. All right, so let's answer these last two. Who is the strongest DBZ, DBGT character Superman can defeat? I don't know. I mean, like I said before... I don't know how Superman's power compares to Z Fighters. If you really, really want to get a better person to answer that, I think you should ask Duct Tape from Comic Corner. He has a pretty good knowledge of both Dragon Ball and, and DC Universe. I honestly just don't know enough about Superman. But what I'm trying to say is that I think that most of the Z Fighters have a better knowledge of martial arts from Superman from what I've talked to with Duct Tape. It's just that when you factor in power and speed, that's usually the one that matters. It doesn't matter how strong. The, in the Dragon Ball universe, you know, you could be smarter than your opponent, but if you're significantly weaker and slower, you're just not going to beat him. And unless you could really outsmart him. And I mean, honestly, I think that, you know, Superman, I, I think Superman can compare to some of the Z fighters. I think he's probably stronger than all of the Z fighters as of the Saiyan saga. But I, I think in overall strength, Superman is perhaps the strongest character in all of the different uh, Dragon Balls, uh, just in terms of actual strength. But in terms of speed, like he's he's much slower in terms of actual combat than most characters. Right. And like even his travel speed, which is many, many, many times faster than light, doesn't really matter in a fight, especially since Goku can use instant transmission. Right. So, I mean, that basically puts it here. And here's the last question of the day by Sufjan. Again, we answered a lot of Sufjan questions. <laughs> Hulk versus Broly. I mean, I've gotten this... Okay, I've gotten this fight a lot. And honestly, it's a fun topic. But I think it's... I'm not trying to be mean. But I just don't think it's a very realistic topic. Hulk is a very strong villain in the Marvel Universe. And I know a decent amount about Hulk. But, guys, you gotta factor in... How long you gotta factor in how strong Dragon Ball Z characters are. I think Yamcha would mop the floor with with the Hulk. Oh yeah. And the reason I'm saying this, guys, is that you gotta remember how long would it take the Hulk to get to a Z fighter in terms of power. Yes, I know his power is unlimited and he can keep getting stronger. Number one, Hulk is not even in the quantismos, and I just made that word up, in terms of <laughs> speed. So he's never going to be faster than a Z fighter. He can't fly. He can't shoot energy blasts. So that already gives a Z fighter a huge advantage because they can kill him. They can blow him to atoms from a distance. Yeah. So... And, and I and and you know and I've actually ducked it from Comic Corner. He said Hulk cannot regenerate from atoms, and yeah. nobody's ever been able to successfully do that. So you gotta rem you gotta factor in that even if Hulk's power is unlimited, it would take him probably a lifetime to get as strong as a Z fighter in terms of just raw power, considering the yeah. fact that you know bullets have a little bit of a, of 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 an effect on him in his like regular just you know his first initial Hulk stages. There's no way he could compete with Z fighters. You know, no. now maybe Dragon Ball fighters like Goku from Dragon Ball. I think Hulk could probably beat him at certain yeah. points. But like once you get up to Z and GT and 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 Super and and Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods, come on. I think Yamcha would mop the floor with Hulk, and I don't even think he would last two seconds. But no. I know why a lot of people compare him because they're big, both muscular, angry guys, and and they both you know Hulk, you know. Uh, Broly has green hair and green energy, and I've always intentionally <laughs> felt that he oh, Toriyama kind of based Broly off of Hulk in a weird way. But you yeah, know. Um, well, in my opinion, all Broly would have to do is flick uh, Hulk, and he'd go flying into space. And Hulk can't fly, so he would just be stuck in space, and the fight would be over. Yeah, 
It would, it would be incredibly easy for anyone in Dragon Ball Z to beat Hulk, because all they have to do is put him in space. Well, duct tape has told me that, you know, Hulk actually was sent in space. They threw him in outer space before, and he actually, you know, was stayed in his Hulk form the whole time. And, yeah, but uh, it's, I mean, the fight's over if he can't do anything. All right. Well, anyways, guys, that's been our video for today. I think me and Mike have had a nice good time here today, you know, answering a lot of these questions. I hope you guys enjoyed our, you know, Quaman, you know, answer subscriber questions version. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So most importantly, over everything else, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys. And please check out Mike from Laughingstock Media. He makes really awesome videos. And I'll post a link to his channel in the description. But that does it for this video today, guys. See you later.